to discuss this issue over the phone. We're joined by economic expert Shabir Razvi. Shabir Razvi. Shabir, now how significant is a free trade zone between India and the Russian-led customs union? Hi, good afternoon. Um, it's, it's not just a free trade zone, as your report quite rightly pointed out, that way back in November, three, four months ago, in November 2014, Mr. Putin visited um, India and met with the uh, new Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, at that time. Um, what you've got to remember is that India and Russia have been long allies, especially during the Cold War period, uh, when um, India was a leading member of the non-aligned movement and uh, the Soviet Union at that time had its allies in the progressive governments and the third world allies. So they've had this long-term relationship. Obviously, the booming economic cooperation between India and the United States since uh, 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed, had obviously relegated business ties between New Delhi and Moscow um, a, a little behind. But what has happened since November is that um, uh, Mr. Mo Modi and Mr. Putin agreed to a triple uh, their nation's trade volume to 30 billion by 2025. Um, and, and they also sort of uh, um, uh, released a vision statement on the collaboration in building up India's nuclear industry. So at many levels, there has been cooperation between uh, Russia and India. What is also interesting to note that uh, um, a, a diamond sort of polishing is uh, uh, India supplies 90% of the polished diamonds to the world market, and Russia is a very large producer of raw diamonds. So there's another trade developing there between uh, two nations. But the key aspect of this whole trade and free zones and so on is that both Russia and India have agreed to settle more of their trade in their own currencies, bypassing the, uh, uh, the euro and particularly the dollar. Um, so that sort of uh, puts a totally different complexion where India and Russia are moving and together with obviously China. Shabir, is, you're, you're, you mentioned that they're now going to negotiate in their own currency, but is this move between India and Russia a stark reflection of the economic downturn in the West? Well, downturn in the West is one issue. Second is obviously sanctions against Russia over the Ukraine uh, problem. Um, and, of course, at the end of the day, the economies uh, of the East are growing a lot more rapidly than many of the European uh, economies. India has a population of 1.2 billion. Uh, therefore, it's a good market for, for, for Russia. Um, and at the end of the day, India requires uh, oil, um, um, gas, and so on to continue the growth of its economy. So it's a win-win situation for both Russia and India in this respect. Let's talk about China for a minute, because you've mentioned that the economy in the East is growing much more quickly. So, you know, what does this um, trade deal zone between Russia and China mean for the global, the global economy? Well, for the global econ economy, uh, what it means is that you have a population of nearly 3 billion that would be trading amongst themselves. Secondly, they will be bypassing the dollar. Therefore, dollar will become even weaker. It will have repercussions on the European economy as well because those nations are trading um, amongst themselves. And at the same time, uh, your, your listeners, and you may recall that uh, there was a meeting of the BRIC countries uh, uh, six months ago when they have set up the um, uh, um, sort of, if you like, a counter to the World Bank um, with um, uh, Russia, China, India, Brazil, and South Africa being part of that particular bank. So there's lots of activity taking place at the economic front to bypass Europe and America. And I think the challenges facing uh, the West as far as the economy is developing in the East will be quite significant. And so how do you feel that the West will deal with these new um, events? Well, perhaps they'll start bombing places again? No, sorry, <laughs> leaving that aside. Uh, I think the issue would be that if they're uh, really willing to do business, they'll have to negotiate with the new paradigm that's being uh, set in motion uh, by the folly of sanctions that have been applied by our leaders in the West against Russia, against 
um, Iran, against Venezuela. So sanctions are hurting the West as much as they may be hurting Russia and, and Iran and other countries. But they are finding a new mode of doing business, a new mode of transactions, a new mode which will be beneficial for their own nations. Shabir Rizvi, economic expert, thank you very much for joining us today.